You mentioned the Democrats don't have a lot much time to lose. If they're going to replace Biden, they better do it quickly. And one name that's always near the top of the list is Gavin Newsom as, as a re possible replacement. You wrote about him this week in the New York Post and he's the governor of California. California ain't doing too well. Can he fail his way up to the presidency? I, I fear he could. Um, Gavin Newsom absolutely wrecked San Francisco, uh, which should be one of the world's great cities, and it's it's a garbage uh, mm. dump uh, days. Uh, uh, he proceeded to roll out similar policies across California as governor, and has has made most you know much of California into a dump as well. Uh, he, he he talks all the time about you know the latest stuff about equity and equality and all that sort of thing, and he presides over one of the most extraordinarily unequal states. He's just sent his own. Uh, a daughter mm. to a $60,000 a year private school. Uh, and maybe it's because among her own peer group in the state schools in California, you have kids with like 30% literacy and 34% numeracy yeah. uh, skills. Th now that's just, just a shameful record. He has no record to run on, but he does have, sadly, the sort of well, look, a lot of people fall for this. He People say he looks presidential. He looks the part. He has good hair. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, as we discussed last week, Justin Trudeau has good hair. Doesn't mean he could run Canada. Uh, uh, um, it's the same with Newsom. I, I do fear that he could he could fool a certain amount of people. Um, I think he's a terrible, he would be a terrible choice because any Republican running okay. against Gary and just has to point to California. Um, and uh, and Ron DeSantis, when he debated Newsom uh, uh, earlier in the year, pointed out all of the things that can be pointed out against Newsom's record. But we'll see. I mean, he's definitely one of the candidates that the, uh, that the Dems are playing footsie with at the moment uh, in their desperate attempt to ease out Biden. Well, <laughs> uh, California is is such a strange, strange place because it's so blessed. It's got everything going for it. And like you said, it is a mess. It's so much crime, the, the gap between rich and poor, the uh, failures in, in education. It, oh, we could talk about it all day. Now, what I worry about most with what we saw from the president uh, is, is the weakness that the Biden administration exudes and what that means for America, what that means for the world. Uh, particularly when you look at the West's enemies, uh, we are in a period of heightened vulnerability with the likes of Iran, Russia, China, knowing there's a few more months of this chaos in the White House. Uh, how do you see that? Because we, we do have conflict around the world. And you made the point recently that if, the, if America was more respected, if the Biden White House was feared, we possibly wouldn't have American hostages still in Gaza or have a Wall Street journalist's uh, a Wall Street Journal journalist uh, in a, in a prison in Russia. Oh, that's absolutely right, Rita. I, I'm I'm uh, amazed that there isn't more um, outrage really in America that an American reporter can be snatched in Moscow and held hostage, mm. that still more than a hundred Israelis uh, are hostage in Gaza, um, including five or six Americans. Um, I, I can't understand. I mean, the, the, the Thai government got their hostages out from Gaza through some weird deal. Seems that Hamas feared the Thai government or their connections more than they fear uh, the US of A. Uh, I think this is, by the way, I think this is a very, very important thing for Donald Trump to run on, uh, which is that there's a situation that has emerged much like 7980 with the Carter of Reagan uh, 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 election. Let flip. Because if you remember, the Iranian ho hostage situation of American hostages in Iran was a drumbeat in the election process. And Reagan really soared in those days as he as he made it clear that if he got into office, the hostages would be released. And lo and behold, Carter was mm. chucked out. Reagan came in and the hostages were released. I'd like to see Donald Trump do something similar. You know, he can easily stand on that stage and say to Qatar, Iran, Hamas, I know you're listening. 
I know you're listening. You better keep the hostages. You you either make sure you return them, return them the day I get into office. You better have them in perfect condition or else. And I would like to see that uh, from President Trump. I'd like to see that from any potential leader of the free world. And I think it's shocking uh, that Biden and his administration have spent so little energy on this. And clearly, one of the reasons is that the president himself has no energy. He does take naps in the middle of the day. He is only functioning, it seems, for about five or six hours a day by the admission of his own officials. That's one reason why America is failing on the global stage. Now, we've seen plenty of celebrities disgrace themselves with their lunatic views in recent months, uh, from Robert De Niro to Susan Sarandon. And you can add Roger Waters to the list. The former Pink Floyd frontman has uh, always been vehemently anti-Israel, but his uh, demented views have uh, appeared to have got even more fringe dwelling. Have a look at this. All the filthy, disgusting lies that the Israelis told after October the 7th like what? about burning babies and women being raped, which were all completely... Actually, women were raped. No, they weren't. Yes, they were. Well, there's no evidence. It's been, well, it's been established by the you United Nations. You can say Nations. anything that you want, but there's no evidence. But actually, there is extensive evidence. There is no the evidence. sexual assault and right. rape. Well, there is. OK, well, all right, now... Also, we know what Hamas Roger, broadcast Roger, on Roger, social media. calm down. Roger, Roger, mm. calm down. Don't sink to his level. All right, I won't. What level? Well, stop shouting. Stop shouting back. Let him interrupt you as much as you want. OK. okay. <laughs> I don't even know what's... I think he's got some sort of an imaginary friend, also called Roger, that he's speaking to off-camera there. But, but this rape denial, and I said it's a fringe-dwelling view, but sadly it's not as fringe-dwelling as it should be because you hear this over and over again from the pro-Palestinian crowd... And it is yeah. just so disgusting, so beyond shameful, because there is a great deal of evidence showing how uh, women were raped and, and, and sexually brutalised on October 7 and beyond uh, by Hamas, and that there's just this wholesale denial of it, Douglas. There, there is, and I think there's, there's a very interesting reason for it. Uh, Roger Waters, by the way, I mean, I don't know. I, I actually can't name a Pink Floyd song. Uh, um, maybe that's my bad. <laughs> but I, I, mean, I care not a jot for this man Waters' views on anything. I mean, I don't know. Is he a guitarist? If so, he's just sick to playing the guitar. Um, if he's obviously a very sick individual, very sick in a number of different ways, a variety of ways. There's a whole conference in that thing we just watched there. Uh, but... You know, I think there is a very clear reason why some of these people do want to deny the rapes, to deny the murder of children on the 7th. And it's because if they faced up to it, they would have to ask a question of their own side and of themselves, which they don't want to ask, which is, am I sure we're the good guys? You know, am I sure mm. that... My side, my friends in Hamas, in the case of people like Roger Waters, it, am I sure that I'm on the right side supporting Hamas, supporting the most militant Palestinian extremists, when they seem to be incapable of not raping, not murdering, uh, not killing children, not kidnapping children? Uh, am, am I sure my side's right? And any, there are only about two paths you can take from that. One is maybe I should rethink my support for this terrorist entity and put my support elsewhere. Or you'd have to say, OK, I'm fine with that, by any means necessary. Yeah. And some of them think that. Some of them do think that. But I would have a much more admiration for these people if instead of always trying to deny and deny and deny, they actually faced up to the things that their friends do and did and would do again. But this Waters man, as well as a maniac, he's not a man. He can't even face up to the consequences of his own support and thought, such as it is. Now, before you go, I have to ask you about Prince Harry. He's receiving yet another honour. The Duke of Sussex <laughs> is... Uh, set to receive the Pat Tillman Award for Service at the 2024 ESPYs. Uh, 
Pat Tillman was a, an American hero, late NFL star and US Army Ranger who died during uh, combat in 2004. Uh, Pat Tillman's mother, Mary, is among those who are shocked by this award being given to Harry. She has said that there are far more deserving candidates uh, who do not have Harry's money and resources, who are working quietly. She also said, I'm shocked as to why they would select such a controversial and divisive individual to receive the award. There are recipients that are far more fitting. There are individuals working in the veteran community that are doing tremendous things to assist veterans. But uh, this is not <laughs> new, Douglas. Harry and Meghan keep winning awards it seems to be their full-time occupation these days they don't i think we shouldn't say that they win awards they don't win them they get gifted them by the sorts of people they hang out with <laughs> uh, i mean there's a whole industry of this kind of uh, rubbish uh, uh, you know uh, i mean you know it, what happens with a lot of this is that Meghan or Harry's PR people put in calls to to ask about various awards they can be given, and then they bring their celebrity <laughs> to the awards process, and everyone benefits. I mean, it's so cynical. The Tillman one, this is this is sad because he he was a real American hero, uh, enlisted, left mm. the NFL, enlisted in the army after nine eleven, and 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 gave his life in the defense of his country. It's a sort of reminder, of course, of what is the sad turn in Prince Harry's life, which I think, you know, is the only thing about him which is really interesting, which is that he had the opportunity to have a meaningful life uh, in which he gave his life uh, to the country and to causes like that of veterans, like that of young men who lose their way, like he did in his 20s, and can turn their life around. There was an awful lot he could have been a really meaningful figurehead for. And like his grandfather, the late Duke of Edinburgh, who set up the Duke of Edinburgh Awards, there could have been the, you know, the Prince Harry Awards of, uh, you know, that he could have done so much with his life and the position he had because of the, of the, the benefit of the birth he had. And instead, he took this other way. He took the Montecito Highway way. And here he is, not doing, but receiving awards as if he's doing. And I think there's a, I mean, it's a sort of, it's a part of the inferno that one would not want to live in. No, and uh, before you go, Douglas, you've become such a big deal these days. You've now got your own impersonators and frankly they're good ones I've got to say here is co comic army Kozak thanking uh, you as you Douglas Murray such a phenomenal job in the monk debates taking on the sophistry and deception and utter lies of Mehdi Hassan and those like him of his ilk spouting and spewing lies about Israel he nailed it. I'm going to say Arm is very good. That is, uh, we've had him on this program, not as you, as himself, but he is uh, very good. And uh, this is this is the height of your fame now. He's normally impersonating Donald Trump and and other uh, world figures, and, and Douglas Murray now. It's uh, it's 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 ho ho horrible in a way. He's 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 a talented impersonator. Uh, it's horrible for your <laughs> sense of self to see somebody taking you off, but he's very good at it. He actually is very amusing. A few nights ago in New York, I was in a, a, a steakhouse at, with some friends, and he came over to me and introduced himself. And, um, yeah, I, I said to my friends when I rejoined them, he's very good, but um, uh, to talk, talk about self-consciousness and self-awareness when you have somebody impersonating you in front of yourself. <laughs> Um, you know, he's very good. He's very good, but um, he is uh, yeah, very I, good. I, 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 and if you're going to have some, of... if you're going to have someone impersonating you, it's good if they're a fan. And he's certainly a fan of yours, Douglas Murray. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you, Rita.